Yeah, the, here's one, and I've said this many times. She's actually the head fundraiser for the political party of all the freeholders. They instilled her as the head of the UCIA, who actually gives out no-bid contracts to all these professional engineering and architectural firms who, just by coincidence, donates to the freeholder campaigns. So, I mean, you know, she's, she's not there for her intelligence. She's just there for, for thievery of, of taxpayers' money so she can funnel it to the engineering and architectural firms so they can donate to the freeholders' campaigns. That, that's plain thievery. So, I mean, you know, for her to, to actually think she's, she's speaking highly of, of the UCIA, it, it's just another corrupted department. It, it's pretty sad. You know, to tell you the truth, I mean, if she, if she didn't, if she wasn't able to get her hands on all that taxpayer money, she would probably just end up sitting at her dining room table with a bunch of cats, chain smoking, in a house dress, not knowing what to do. So I mean, you know, she has no power at all except when it comes to taxpayer money. But when she gets her grips on that, that's the only power. So you're saying that's not what she's doing now? <laughs> <laughs> and taxpayer money. <laughs> So anyway, so that's it. I, I digress on this one. But that was the solar program. Another, more false numbers, you know, glowing, glowing reports that they can't prove. They'll be, they'll be well out of office, retired somewhere, when it comes out that the, the SREX never got over 75 bucks and the bonds default and the county owes like $20 million. And Dakotas is getting their money. And Dakotas gets money. The savings, which are around 20000 a month, that's what's going to Dakotas. Dakotas got 31000 last month, actually. It's going to be milk, milk. The whole savings is going to go to them. And it's a way to make money, and it's really a low-life way to do it. Uh, a little out of order for some reason was, you know, there's normally uh, the regular meeting where the public speaks, and then there's this agenda-setting meeting. Uh, which is, is not filmed or anything, so nobody really knows what goes on there. However, just, just to give you a, a recap of what an uh, agenda setting meeting is, is the potential resolutions that are going to show up on the regular public uh, meeting. The directors come in front and they ask for money for whatever programs and uh, efforts that they need. And the freeholders actually do ask the questions. So that's, an, that's the agenda meeting. And then later on, the next week, it would be on the... Uh, regular meeting where the public can actually talk about the resolutions, but, but I digress a little bit. What, what was interesting was at the agenda meeting, not the public uh, regular meeting, they actually had a presentation given by Charlotte DeFilippo. She showed up, and also Jonathan Williams of Dakotas, my, uh, my two good buddies. But anyway, they, they gave a presentation on the solar program that was initiated about a year and a half ago. Uh, and the status of what it is, and, and it's nearly uh, completely installed, and, and I might get my numbers wrong, but it, there's 31, 31 uh, buildings that the solar panels are being installed on in the county, and I think it comprises of 15, uh, 15 municipalities, so like libraries, community centers, schools, uh, municipal buildings, even the Union County, a couple of buildings there. So, so uh, what Charlotte did, and they actually had a handout, which they, they had copies also in this, this today's meeting. But the, what it was was the status of it. And they explained that everything's going well. It's almost done and up and running. I think there was just two more entities that needed to be complete. And, and Charlotte Filippo, the head of the UCIA, by the way, who more or less is funding this end of it, she, she was ecstatic because not only is, is it like a cutting edge and ahead of the curve, technologically, it's also going to return savings to these municipalities more than what they forecast, which maybe John would like to talk about that because you probably didn't even know that. But she says that, you know, now they're going to be able to save all these municipalities $5 million, not whatever the original number was uh, about a year and a half ago when they are saying it. I, I really find that highly suspect, but I, I just wanted to tell you, this is what they did on the agenda meeting. And they, they talked in depth, and it, w it was a very pleasant meeting, very informative, uh, some lies obviously, you know, because you, you have to know what they're talking about to figure out that they're just BS. But let, we'll continue on this, but uh, let's go to John. Um, what, any questions taken at that thing? No, the, the public, the, no, the public wasn't, being an agenda meeting, 
the public does not uh, does not ask questions. The freeholders, uh, for some reason, the, the freeholders said that they didn't read the report yet, so it was like this sudden thing. But there actually was uh, a couple of comments. It wasn't really a Q&A, but Sullivan actually did comment a couple of times. But I don't think they actually wanted a Q&A only because the freeholders weren't really up to speed as to uh, what this program was, so they probably didn't have any questions. And Jonathan Williams was supposed to be at this meeting. You know, of Dakota's Fitzpatrick. This is what they this, they promised he was there. It's uh, three years, Chairman. It's my understanding that uh, Jonathan Williams wasn't going to be available today to provide some information and answer any questions. However, he had a death in the family, so wasn't able to come tonight. Yeah, yeah so a death in the family, but uh, I don't know. Maybe it's me, but uh, having this presentation at an agenda meeting, Jonathan Williams not coming, and I never go to agenda meetings. I think they're just afraid of me. But you know, that's only me. Now, why would they be afraid of me? Because they bonded twenty million dollars to get a savings, maybe of two hundred fifty thousand a year. That five million is a joke. They're not gonna. That that's projecting and a same same thing. Yeah, they talked about it like it was real. And you no, know, it's it's a waste. Plus, you know, look at these solar panels. Nothing is. What if they break? What if they? Uh, there's so many issues involved. And the other thing, which I brought up to them here, um, that UCIA presentation. Uh, actually, I would have loved to seen it. I, I don't know. If I'd known it was at the agenda meeting, I would have come. No, it's not. I'm not coming to any agenda meetings. report's available. Yeah. Well, I'm not coming to any agenda meetings, but so you can report. feel free to do it there. But, yeah, I saw the report, but the one thing I didn't see is any mention of a possible default on the bonds. In that, when this project emanated three years ago, SREC prices were at 600 Now they're at 75 Eighty percent of the cost of this is supposed to be paid by SREX, and now they're, they're collapsed pretty much. So, is there a timeline as to when these bonds will default and uh, Union County will have to pick up the whatever it comes out to be in eighteen, nineteen million dollars? I was just curious if that was even mentioned at all. Just those two things. Thank you. It's uh, three, Mr. Chairman. It's my understanding that uh, John Williams wasn't going to be available today to provide some information and answer any questions. However, he had a death in the family, so wasn't able to come tonight. Yeah, and that was more of an update to the board on the status of the project. And I don't know, Mr. Burry, if you've had a chance to read the, uh, the report that was distributed, but I believe there's some commentary on there on the, s the scope of the project, how it's going, and the status of some of the initiatives. So. The UC PAC, I mean, you know, you seem to know some of the things going on there, so I hope you'll share it with some of your friends and uh, where the money's being spent. That'll be helpful. Okay, Mrs. Ryan? That's the main thing. If anybody who's talking about solar panels in New Jersey, it's SREC prices and the collapse, and that's why they're scuttling around. For them not to ask what the SREC collapse would do to the bonds, uh, that's just a terrible. Uh, uh, they, they really have no clue. Maybe they know what's going on. They don't want to ask. They just want to uh, voice this on. Let's get uh, get it over with. And when are these bonds going to uh, default? It's probably pretty soon. Tioga has money. They got their tw nine, 20 million. They spread it around. They kicked back the apparently the 1.2 million in fees. Birdsall and TNF. Yeah, about 800,000 to Dakota's, 400,000 to Birdsall. Uh, uh, Twelve thousand in the Union County Alliance. Uh, that's paid for through the twenty million, but they are going to run out if they have to depend on seventy-five dollar SREC prices. Uh, they could probably hold out for three, four years, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, let me let me talk about this because maybe maybe you're not aware of it, maybe you are. But well, what it is, it, yeah, these SREC prices two years ago were approximately six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars, which. Everybody started all these solar programs because they were going to. SREC is the, the generating electricity and what the utilities are going to buy it uh, for from the person who's generating it, say on the roofs of their houses. But those SRECs were, were six, seven hundred dollars two years ago, 
and then slowly they collapsed to around $300, and today they're at like $75 to $80. Now that's a big drop. However, just recently the legislation passed back in June where they're forcing the utilities uh, to buy like at least 50% more uh, going forward, and they actually have a, a number going up, to, you know, in the millions. So they're hoping that the supply demand curve will, by forcing the utilities to buy more and more SRECs, will then also increase the price. It's not going to work. The, the well, idea well, is fairly simple. They forced regular utilities, the people who have your uh, do your electricity. They said we have to have 20 percent or so from solar power. If you don't have it, you got to buy these SRECs. So what did the utilities, PSE&T, and all those other people do? They made their own solar powers. They put all that stuff there. Yeah, so they wouldn't phone. have to buy the SREX. And obviously the market's going to collapse. But, There's but no the, buyers. But then this legislation came out that they got to buy more SREX. So they'll buy more. Well, they'll, they'll, build, more. Buy, they'll build more solar. And, and it'll, this will be all popping up. These silly little things will be on there. And PSCNC is going to put, be putting in. But they're not going to buy SREX. Yeah, the utilities, the utilities realize why spend money elsewhere right. the where they can spend it for themselves and that's why you're looking yeah. at all those telephone poles and I'll tell you all I have to do is probably put bigger solar panels up there and, and that's it and generate more because yeah. so it's, I it's thought dead. I saw bigger ones going up uh, down it's a dead issue SREX will never go up to that 200 obviously because PSE and G and those other people they won't let it. Who, would, who would just fork over $600 I'll for, tell you what, for this you mentioned 200 options. In, in this handout that they had and it was a presentation that they had last week and they also handed it out this week they're actually basing everything on $350 SREC prices. Where you're poo pooing 200, they actually are forecasting 350. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the future's going to bring. I, you have no idea. But but you know they're talking like this is all firm. They're going to make great savings, even more savings than what it was what they forecasted two years ago. It's just basically a crock, um, artificially generated numbers. Uh, whatever they wanted, they want to come out looking good. That's how they're forecasting numbers. But this actually does bring a, a question where they're saying at $300, $350 SREC prices that they're going to actually give the municipalities a greater savings than before. And before is actually $600 SREC prices. So, I mean, SREC prices are almost cut in half, and yet they're going to generate more savings for the towns. See, these are the things where, like, you know, all you have to do is, is turn over a page and start looking at it. And you start figuring out. And it's just a bunch of BS. It's just a bunch of BS. And and so we're looking at this. But deeper, and John knows these particulars from a year and a half ago, but back then when they when they gave the contract out to Tioga, that they, they were gonna bond for twenty dollars and they were gonna have Tioga um, foot the bill for three million dollars. Is that right? There, there was like a three million dollars just to make them have a piece of the action. Tioga is the one that ran this program in installing all these uh, solar panels. So the question is, so here they are, they spent $20 million, but it says nothing about Tioga's $3 million that they were supposed to front towards this program. So my guess, just on the surface looking at it, they probably told Tioga he doesn't have to front the $3 million because the SREC prices collapsed and Tioga was probably going to lose $3 million. So they kind of like just washed their hands and said, that's it, Tioga. You know, you don't have to front the three million dollars because you're going to lose three million dollars. And Tioga said, "Fine, no problem." So that, that's my guess. Hmm. You can't tell. I, you can look at the bond offering, see how close they are, or what they're selling for now. But it's it's a desperate time, and that's why they snuck this in at the agenda meeting and got it over with. Uh, was Charlotte in a golf cart or anything? I mean, she walked up there. <laughs> no, no, she, she was in a golf cart. She, oh. Room. <laughs> no, she was in the golf cart. Uh, she was her oh, usual was. happy self. Uh, you know what? Tell you what. Let's segue into Charlotte the Filippo. Oh. She was given. She was. She. She was also given a, a, a little quickie report about the UCIA after she gave the presentation on the solar, and and she's saying how great the UCIA is for Union County with all the programs that she's running. And she go. And she tells the freeholders. She goes. And not once have, has any of the projects ever been over budget. And the freeholders are going, oh, yeah, right, right, yeah. But anyway, it turns out, I mean, and I got up there tonight, and, and I, you probably have it on film, so you can show a little clip. But basically, she just lied to the freeholders because 
the one thing, what about the Union County uh, golf clubhouse and banquet facility at Gallup Hill? That was bid three times, over budget each time until the third time. So when she says nothing was over budget, it was over budget. She's lying. Was I that actually, a UCIA project? Yeah, it was a UCIA out? project. And, and to me, I mean, she's starting to look like a pathological liar, I said, which they, uh, they didn't like to hear that. But, I mean, like, you, every time she opens her mouth, you can catch her One lying. One mustn't speak of the master in such a manner. Yeah, she's the, she's the head of the, yeah, the, here's one, and I've said this many times. She's actually the head fundraiser for the political party of all the freeholders. They instilled her as the head of the UCIA, who actually gives out no-bid contracts to all these professional engineering and architectural firms who, just by coincidence, donates to the freeholder campaigns. So, I mean, you know, she's, she's not there for her intelligence. She's just there for, for thievery of, of taxpayers' money so she can funnel it to the engineering and architectural firms so they can donate to the freeholders' campaigns. That, that's plenty of thievery. So, I mean, you know, for her to, to actually think she's She's speaking highly of the UCIA. It's just another corrupted department. It's pretty sad. You know, to tell you the truth, I mean, if she, if she didn't, if she wasn't able to get her hands on all that taxpayer money, she would probably just end up sitting at her dining room table with a bunch of cats, chain smoking, in a house dress, not knowing what to do. So, I mean, you know, she has no power at all except when it comes to taxpayer money. That, but she gets your grips on that. That's the only power. So you're saying that's not what she's doing now? <laughs> <laughs> and taxpayer money. <laughs> so anyway, so that's it. I, I digress on this one. But that was the solar program. Another, more false numbers. You know, glowing, glowing reports that they can't prove. Uh. They'll be, they'll be well out of office, retired somewhere. When it comes out that the the S Rex never got over seventy five bucks. And the bonds default, and the county owes like twenty million dollars. And Dakotas is getting their money. And Dakotas gets money. The savings, which are around twenty thousand a month, that's what's going to Dakotas. Dakotas got thirty-one thousand last month, actually. It's going to be milk, milk. The whole savings is going to go to them, and it's a way to make money. And it's really a low-life way to do it. Uh, I mean, it's hidden. It, there's no accountability, and. You got to get rid of either political parties or campaign contributions or something. You got to stop this, or else they'll think up anything to get money into their coffers. Yes, Jim. All that being said, and that's really good stuff, guys. Uh, and I believe every word you said. Um, but if the county was so proud of this solar energy initiative, I still don't understand why they didn't do it in front of the cameras at a regular meeting so that the public could ask questions. They hit it, obviously, they have issues with it. My sole comment. <laughs>